G'day YouTube, one MJ here and welcome back. Alright, Wednesday evening here in Australia and the market is down ever so slightly. So about $2.36 trillion at the moment. And we are on CoinGecko today because the normal site that I use is uh, having technical issues at the moment. Uh, so uh, over to CoinGecko it is. Alright, so yeah, market cap down a little bit, volume yeah, we got $144 billion there, which is not too bad. BTC dominance has dropped a little bit. This was at 44.6, so down ever so slightly. ETH dominance, 17.2, uh, and uh, gas is 75 guay. All right, so as we can see, the market's sort of a bit all, all over the place. Some things have done well, others haven't. You know, it's kind of to be expected when the market's kind of topsy-turvy at the moment, particularly the Bitcoin chart is fairly interesting at the moment. I mean, you can see the price is 54000 This was getting up close to that 58000 so we definitely have come down a bit. But overall, the market's only down 1.3%, so it's not all that bad. But look, it's not exactly uh, great either because we got to a fairly substantial level and we couldn't break through it and we've rejected from it. So that, you know, dead cat bounce sort of scenario is still in play, although it's unlikely. It doesn't look like a usual dead cat bounce, but it is possible. Again, things don't always play out the same as they sort of normally would. You know, the technicals uh, are a bit of a guide. They're not an exact, uh, in general, some technicals, you know, quite often play out. But, you know, the dead cat bounce sometimes can be uh, a lot less, you know, of a rise than what most people uh, would expect uh, and i'll get to that very shortly anyway last 24 hours what's performed the best let's have a look all right there we go olympus so that is up 13 percent binance doing quite nice 13 percent pancake swap stacks there we go making a nice uh, move spell token never even heard of that but it's now in the top 100 harmony cello so we got some nice gains there but we do need to remember the market is down. So they are sort of the outliers. What about losses then? What hasn't performed so well? So there we can see Filecoin is down. Ecash, Shiba Inu again had that big massive pump. Uh, now pulled back, but is still up 63% for seven days. Phantom, Arweave. But look, one double digit sort of loss. And then all the rest are single digit losses. And most are going to be sitting around, you know, the low single digit losses to, you know, very... Uh, low, not even single digit losses, uh, less than 1%. So market, yeah, not looking great, not looking awful, just kind of sideways. But this is what worries me a little bit. So here's the Bitcoin chart. Now we got up to this kind of resistance point. We can see, you know, around that kind of $58,000 mark, we can see we had a lot of confluence through here. It was both support and uh, resistance on a number of occasions. And we got rejected from it and we are falling at the moment doesn't mean it's all over but again it's not going to be a surprise that bitcoin comes back and kind of you know retest maybe even back down at 52,000 and look maybe even lower we've got to have again this is a big move up so you've got to think that we're going to come back at least a little bit before we maybe start to make our way back up but at the moment this would be a very odd dead cat bounce if it were one but again the big players know how big you know all the charting and stuff is on you know social media and just on the internet these days all their old tactics are now public uh you know are easy for the public to find so this could be an unusual de dead cat bounce if it is still to be one so usually a dead cat bounce will drop really hard it'll you know rally back fairly good but it'll only come up about sort of three quarters of the way uh, where it was before and then start to roll over so this is definitely something very different but again this definitely looked very similar to this over here so a lot of the old charting patterns they may start to play out completely different now i mean especially this you know the wyckoff uh dissemination sort of phase uh you know, it was picked up on, and now everyone kind of knows about it. Uh, distribution uh, phase, so the Wyckoff distribution, uh, and then was this accumulation to just again fake people out and then dump it even lower? We'll have to wait and see. Again, I think a lot of new charting patterns are probably going to be made over the next sort of decade or so, because it really is the last decade. I mean, a little bit more. They've they've definitely been out there, but particularly, you know, with things like YouTube and all that kind of stuff. You know, all those old charting patterns, 
they're everywhere now all across social media every youtuber sort of talks about them and things like that so i think you know traders will now have to you know try and formulate new ones uh, to try and fool markets because most of us will eventually well if we don't pick up on it you know s some other sort of trading uh, TA expert who's been around for a while that has their own social media uh, kind of platform they will be onto it straight away so yeah at the moment Bitcoin not not looking too good but again if it comes back to 52,000 to find this is some support again we had that you know wick that kind of came down but we really haven't kind of touched it got close there so maybe that's what's going to happen over this week over the next few days to so the weekend we come down we actually find support on 52,000 before we start to move up again no guarantees in life I'm not giving you any financial advice just my personal opinion that's not going to surprise me but again I don't think this is a dead cat bounce it'd be a very odd one to get so close to an old all-time high to then you know roll over and truly find a new low but I don't think it'll be the first time in history it's ever happened. So that's something we need to keep in mind. All right, a couple of stories I want to look at. Celsius Network has raised $400 million in a funding round and it's been led by Westcap. So Celsius is now valued at over $3 billion. Now there's been a lot of regulation FUD. You know, there are a number of states that, you know, kind of put orders out, cease and desist. I think it was Texas, New Jersey, uh, God, I can't even remember them all now. I think there was about three or four in the end, and the same states did the exact same thing to BlockFi. But even with all this going on, big business are looking to put money into platforms like this. So I get the feeling a lot of them don't think any of this, you know, sort of regulation. You know, there's going to be regulation, we know that, but they're just not too worried about companies such as BlockFi and Celsius just being, you know, really heavy handedly regulated. They just don't see that coming, and so they put their money where their mouth is. Hundreds of millions is a lot of money, uh, and I'm enjoying uh, using Celsius. I, I, I like the weekly rewards. Uh, they're pretty good. And look, I've got BlockFi as well. It's really just their Bitcoin, it's their level. Uh, of re returns like you have to have less than half a bit not have to have less than half a bitcoin but blockfi only pay i think you know five percent on bitcoin rewards up to i think it's 0.25 or half a bitcoin and then after that they go really really low uh similar thing with ethereum you can only have a few ethereum in there to get that five percent and then everything after that gets a really really low return whereas celsius uh, has a, a lot higher level not rewards their rewards are still around about the same but yeah very interesting that you know all these states of not all these states but there's a few states that have come out and you know give these cease and desist orders but you know both BlockFi and Celsius have come out and said they're happy to work with these states and they don't believe that they're doing anything wrong and it's true there is no regulation for crypto so how can you say that they are you know you know selling securities and all the rest of it when that hasn't even been clearly defined and a lot of people are kind of doubtful that you know i mean definitely some you know some cryptocurrencies are going to be ruled securities but i just don't know if it's going to be this kind of blanket ban that everything uh, is a security but we'll have to wait and see but still very interesting 400 million dollars put into celsius even with all that kind of fud going on and speaking of fud so the IMF has bring out, brought out a report and they say crypto, cryptonization, crypto, cryptoization, I don't know how they say that, uh, as a threat to global economy. Now look, there are some parts that I kind of agree. So the International Monetary Fund is worried that, you know, uh, the cryptonization of developing worlds is a concern. And I agree that there are definitely concerning parts of it. And we can go over to here and we look at the Bank of Spain. They've come out and they've criticized El Salvador's for foray into Bitcoin. And this is the part that worries me. This is what they said. The bank examined several pain points the country encountered while applying its Bitcoin strategy and raises concerns about how some actions have been taken with little transparency. So this is this is the concerning part now you know i don't know whether that's true or we just have to take it uh, from their word that there's little transparency i haven't read all the documents but i spoke about this the other day that it'll be these you know underdeveloped nations that are going to come and do it and they're going to you know if it all goes well for them and they do it properly this is what i spoke about yesterday 
they have to do it properly. If they don't do it property properly, sorry, uh, and it all backfires and blows up, that's going to be what old traditional finance slash the IMF and things like you know uh, Bank of Spain and things like that are going to say. See, we told you it was all. Uh, no good and it was all fake and all the rest of it and don't get me wrong it doesn't prove that it was fake or you know a scam or anything like that it just proves that the countries that did it didn't you know as they say uh, cross their t's and dot their i's properly and all the rest of it and guess what will happen when they fud it and get everyone to pa a panic sell they're going to be buying it up because they know it's not uh, not a dud crypto uh, particularly bitcoin but also some other cryptos that you know they're not duds they're not fakes they're legit but that is what they're going to do to push the price so low. They're waiting for a moment like this. I can tell you that is exactly what they're doing. They can see the writing on the wall. They know what's coming. But they're just waiting for that one little thing to kind of go wrong. And, you know, dispel at least some cryptos and say, I knew that one was no good and that one was no good and that one was no good. But things like Bitcoin at least... You know, again, outside of some code fold or some supercomputer that can break Bitcoin it's it's here to stay again that's personal opinion not financial advice but you just look at how long it's been around all the adoption that's going all the regulation that they're eventually going to put on it hopefully it's not all that regulation but the regulation that's coming they want to get on top of it and they just need again some country to kind of stuff it up and then they'll pretend like it was bitcoin's fault uh, and less of the country's fault Everyone panic sells, they then buy the absolute backside out of it and say, look, it was the country's fault, not Bitcoin's fault. And then they pump it back up after they got it super cheap and everyone starts buying it again. That's the way, you know, these companies work. And that's the reason that these kind of articles come out. You can come down here and it says here, but this is concerning if it's true. The opacity and the lack of consensus with which the project has been carried out has been another limiting factor. Thus, the main global rating agencies agreed to carry out a downward revision of El Salvador's sovereign credit rating. I mean, the credit rating was low anyway, and the IMF just wants to have control over all these developing countries because they know eventually they're going to grow, and if they get in nice and early and have control of them, then they make a whole lot of money. That's the whole point uh, of what the IMF does. You know, they keep them in these really restrictive kind of policies and they won't say that they'll be like oh no we're trying to help them and keep them safe but if everything goes well for el salvador and bitcoin does really well then you know the country's wealth will do really well how they spend it completely different uh story but that will likely drag not yeah let's say that drag their country out of you know kind of destitute and the big countries will then look at it and go oh girl all right We've got to get on board this and they will start to copy. But it is going to be these smaller nations. But we just got to be careful the smaller nations do it properly and don't, you know, unfortunately stuff it up. And like I said, forget to, you know, cross the T's and dot the I's. That'll be really bad. But here it says, with just over 50% of its population with internet access and a market share of smartphones that barely reaches 40% of El Salvador, it is at the bottom of the uh, Central American countries in terms uh, of the level of digital training. So basically a lot of the El Salvadorians don't really have access uh, to mobile phone networks and things like that, so they probably won't be able to take, uh, you know, really get on board with this Bitcoin stuff. But I do think a lot of that is changing. I think they're building infrastructure. And again, we have to probably take this uh, information with a grain of salt because it's not coming from El Salvador and if it was you'd have to take that with a grain of salt as well but it is concerning that maybe a lot of El Salvadorians don't really understand crypto all that well and unfortunately some of them will probably get burnt the smarter ones you know the educated ones you know probably do a lot better but unfortunately you know in developing nations there's generally a lot of people who are less educated than other developed nations around the world and they're the ones that can get really hurt if they don't understand what they're doing i think there was something further over here i wanted to have a look at no that was over here yeah the imf they really just want to keep control of these developing nations and that's what it is it's a form of control they want to remain at the top they can't do it with you know the really big countries because the big countries have already got themselves sorted by the developed nations it's the underdeveloped nations that the imf want to get in there and it's what it is again it's a form of control they won't like that uh being said but that's exactly what it is it's monetary control all right i've been feeling this at the moment so u.s inflation expectations are the highest since 2013 
gas prices, what I've been feeling, have skyrocketed and supply chains are buckling. There's a lot of issues going on around the world still with, you know, the pandemic and things like that and definitely inflation. It says here, the latest survey of consumer expectations report and the US households believe, sorry, I'm going to say this again, the latest survey of consumer expectations report and US households believe inflation will be up 5.3% one year from now. In addition to the decay economic outlook, gas prices across the US have skyrocketed up more than $1 from a year ago. Uh, very similar in Australia. We haven't gone up $1, but price uh, fuel prices in just the last probably two months have gone yeah, exponential. They are up nearly, I'd say, sort of 50% at least. And, you know, there's people talking about inflation going up 5.3%. There's a lot of smart people on Twitter and YouTube and that saying that inflation is at about 15% per year. And it's compounding. So if it's up 15% this year, it's then going to compound 15% up the next year. Now, whether it's going to continue to do that or not, we'll have to wait and see. But it is a worry. And again, the gas prices particularly, we've felt that here in Australia, they have gone up substantially. This is where things are going though. So a little bit of brighter news. So CBA, hopefully I say that right, CBA Bank launches program for users to earn yields on crypto. So again, there are banks around the world over in Switzerland. They're pretty crypto forward over there. And CBA Bank, they're going to hold your cryptos for you and they're going to uh, earn yield for you. So what programs they're going to use, uh, not exactly sure, but this is the future. And particularly for the older generation, again, the boomers and things like that, you know, Gen Y and probably Z and all the rest of it, they're not really going to use banks uh, too much in the future, I don't think. That's where banks are going to struggle. It's just that older generation that, again, the boomers who got all the money, but it's probably just too much of a stretch for them to ask them to you know, understand crypto. They're just going to go to their bank, put it in their bank, and that's where their banks are going to make mega dollars because they're going to charge some good interest. You know, If they can get you know, 9 10%... Uh, on the crypto, and that's the banks, and I'm not saying Serba, Seba Bank's doing it, but and most banks will. If they can get 9% yield, they're probably going to give their members maybe 4% of it. That's literally what it would come down to. Uh, but it won't last forever because, again, the younger generation, they will know what's really going on, and eventually uh, these banks will have to offer better and better returns until they get to the point, again, where the young generation, they're not going to go through banks at all because they, why would you pay someone 1% or even 2% when you can do it yourself for free? And technology will likely have trained, changed drastically in that time. But currently they can earn uh, polka dot, Tezos and Cardano. So this is all staking. That's most likely what it's going to be. The people, again, who just don't understand crypto will put their crypto inside this bank. Polka dot, oh, I don't even know what the returns are. I think Cardano is around about 5 or 6%. No idea what Tezos is. I think polka dot was around 15%, something like that. Uh, you know, they're just going to be staking these coins and then paying out a dividend on those but again you can do it yourself it's actually not that hard and look they are looking to add other cryptocurrencies in the future so this is what is coming this is the the short-term future the long-term future is people just won't use banks and, and that's the honest truth unless the banks i don't know what they can do to survive long term short term next kind of you know 20 to 30 years absolutely they can stick around but outside of that you know, I just can't imagine, again, the young generation are going to go, you want to charge me for something I can do for free? Why? And that's the future that I see. Again, never financial advice, just my personal opinion. Now, last but not least, this is interesting. So new Australian ransomware plan allows for seizure of crypto. So Australian authorities, i.e. the government, will be able to seize or freeze cryptocurrencies linked to cybercrime under new legislation. Now, I actually, I like this as long as it doesn't get abused. You know, if there's nefarious stuff going on, i.e. criminal activities and that, crypto is being used, the government absolutely should seize it. But my biggest worry is that they come out and they just sell it because that's what they'll generally do in the end. They'll put it on the market and sell it. 
I hope that the Australian government's going to be smarter. And look, if it's some random crypto, yeah, absolutely. Put it on the market, sell it, get whatever you can for it. But if it's, you know, legit ones like Bitcoin, you know, Ethereum and, you know, other things might become more legit in the future, I hope they don't go and just simply sell them. We've got to get away, particularly governments, they're so short term focused. It's on whatever time they're sort of in. So whatever parties in, you know, whether it's Labor or Labor or Liberal here in Australia, it's four years. That's as far as they're looking ahead. They don't plan for anything really more than four years ahead. Now I'm not saying nothing. There are exceptions to the rule, but generally any kind of things they can implement, it's got to be done in the next four years. Because if it's not done in the next four years, then it probably won't get them elected uh, in the, for their another four years after that. So everything is very short term, short sighted. Whereas you know, if they're seizing cryptos, and again, hopefully they're not, you know, overreaching, but legitimate criminal entities, and they're seizing it off them, I really hope they don't just go and sell. That they hold them. And then, you know, again, like if it's Ethereum and it can be staked, then stake the Ethereum. You know, if it's some other crypto that's, you know, they believe has got long-term, you know, longevity, as I would say, stake it and earn rewards. That's better for the country. And then, you know, particularly if there was staking and the government was staking crypto, maybe they wouldn't have to tax us so much. You know, they could tax us less and use, you know, the revenue that they get from staking and, you know, uh, again, Bitcoin through some lending provider and whatnot that would be a better way for you know countries and particularly governments in that to pay for things as opposed to just you know taxing the backside out of you know the workers because that's what it is the rich don't pay much taxes if any it's the working class and the poor who pay all the taxes mainly the working class the poor can't pay a lot of taxes because they're simply poor so it's the working class that basically pay for everything and keep the countries running so imagine your government your country now again is into crypto and you know they're holding whatever percentage they deem as you know the right amount of bitcoin that just continues to go up they have you know ethereum and they're staking ethereum and you know all these kind of things the extra revenue that they're getting from that they should be able to then tax their people less and you know it doesn't i'm not saying no tax we have to pay tax that's my personal opinion we should be helping to you know develop our country and pay for schools and hospitals and things like that but it's all you know there's a lot of other crap stuff that you know we pay taxes for and that should be what the government does again out of things like staking or whatever if this is truly you know the transformative financial future that at least i believe it to be then we should be able, the governments and countries should be able to do things like that and ease up on their citizens, actually allow their citizens the chance to live a better life. I'm getting really, you know, kind of, what's the word? I want to say it's not philosophical. I can't even think of the word now. Total mind blank. But anyway, I'm, you know, preaching a little bit. But that's the idealistic future that I would love to see where we still pay taxes, but, you know, there's systems set up that the government, you know, can make money in other ways and don't have to tax their citizens so much. But the problem is, you know, we live in such a, a greedy kind of society that it wouldn't matter how much money the governments were getting, they'd still want more. They would just want more and more from us. That's the way it's been going for a long time. And, you know, whether crypto can change that, I don't know. I'd really like to think it could, but I'm just not so sure it could. All right, that's it for me. I've rambled on for a little bit. Hopefully you've enjoyed my content. If you have, please go down and hit the like button. Stay safe. Be kind to one another. Hopefully you're on that gain train, although we are down just a little bit. And I'll see you next time.